So I'm going to be reading this book, Memoirs of the Secret Services of John Mackey, Esquire, during the reigns of King William, Queen Anne, and King George the i I'm just going to read a little snippet, and this shows you how our history is so misconstrued and pretty much turned upside down and whitewashed. So I'm going to look up the etymology of the word memoirs. So memoirs means personal record of events, narrative of the facts, I repeat, narrative of the facts or events of the life of a person or a phase of history written from personal knowledge or observation upon points about which the writer is specially informed. Next is complexion, the specific meaning color or hue of the skin of the face developed by mid 15th century. In the medieval physiology, the color of the face was believed to indicate temperament or health. The word rarely is used in a sense of state of being complex. So I'm going to be reading from this book, The Negro Rulers of Scotland and the British Isles, King Charles II. Right. Now it says, um, this is a picture of him, so-called black man, swarthy tawny. The Protestant and Catholic King Charles II was the son of Charles I, who was beheaded in A.D. 1649. Prior to his death of his father, the young prince exiled to France to live among the Medicis, who were of his mother's side. While residing in France, a parliamentary exhibit a wanted poster throughout England for his arrest. The poster referred to him as a tall black man. Charles' nickname while living in England was the Black Boy, and during his exile in France was called the Blackbird Most Royal. As we can see, Charles... It means char, means dark, darky, black, or niger, the same as in charcoal. And he was a very dark-skinned black man, okay? The Medicis were a royal family of African descent who ruled French and Italian monarchy. Charles had heavy, dark features, okay? Now we're going to go to this book, The Memoirs of the Secret Service of John Mackey Esquire during the reign of King William, Queen Anne, and King George the First. Go to page 39. George Fitzroy, Duke of North Humberland, if I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, it's the son to King Charles II by the Duchess of Cleveland, was one of the captains of King James. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, did you possibly switch chairs with me? No, not me. Are you sure? Yeah. Good luck finding your chair, LeBron. Okay. Um, Horfgard, if I'm pronouncing it right, which he quitted at the revolution and never had any um, plot though sometimes presents from the king, all King William's reign. On the queen's uh, affliction to the throne, he was made comfortable of Winford Castle and Lieutenant General and had my Lord of Oxford Regiment of Horde. Here we go right here. This is a... Um, King Charles II, this is his son. He is a man of honor, nice in paying his debts, and living well with his neighbors in the country. There's not much care for the conversation of men of quality, or I assume that's business, I could be wrong. Is a tall black man, I repeat, is a tall black man, like his father, the king, about 40 years old. These are the memoirs of Mr. John Mackey in that specific time period. And he's saying that King Charles II, his son, is a so-called black man, just like his father. But if you look at Google, they'll show you something else. One more. This is page 40. Characters of the Charles Duke of St. Albans. 
is the son to King Charles II by Miss uh, Game. Was made by King William, one of the bed chambers and captain of the band of performers and sent by the king to France to congratulate the marriage of the Duke of Burgundy. He is a gentleman, very way, Davon natural, well-bred, does not love business, is well uh, affected to the constitution of his country. He is, excuse me, he is of a black complexion. Repeat, he is of a black complexion. Not too tall as the Duke of Northumberland, yet very like King Charles. Turned of 30 years old. See that? He is of a black complexion. Now we know the definition of complexion, which means hue or dark in the face. No eyebrows, no hair. This was a so-called black man. So the one thing with history... You know, it's told by winners. But also, you know, when you actually start to buy the books and you start to do the research and then you start to um, you know, come to the realization that most of what you learn in high school, elementary school, preschool, is all narratives. Like a lot of the headlines in America, everything is based on narratives. It's not based on historical truths or facts so there's an internet archive which has many books from the 18 17 probably even beyond that where you have to read between the lines and have a reading comprehension to understand certain words or the etymology of certain words like swarthy or tawny because they're going to give you the complexion the hue melanin of that person see all the images of the black nobility in Europe are all fake portraits they're not historically correct and it's right there in the books but I guess the powers to be the elite or the people who publish these books they know the average you know, American doesn't have time, job, family. They're not going to read this stuff. You know, just like, you know, you, you're taking a jab, you know, hey, watch TV, take it. You know what I'm saying? So no one's going to do this type of extensive or research. But then it comes in the fact that when you have children, of course, you got certain groups that are pan-Africanism. Or just the motherland and, you know, so forth. I mean, it is what it is. I know common sense tells me that, you know, so-called black is not identified with one continent, but with all, you know, regions of land. You know, we were in Europe. We was in Asia. We was in Africa. You know, already here in the Americas as well. And it wasn't because of no slave ship. But you did have slave ships that did come to Americas. That is true. So that's why my book is called The Three Archetypes of the American Negroes, because they teach us in movies and in indoctrination. That's all school is, that we all came from one coast, the West Coast of Sub-Saharan Africa. That is not true. Um, I touch a lot on the, the British Isles because we were there first, our ancestors, uh, Kenneth McAlpin, the... Um, the Stuart dynasties, the uh, Queen Boleyn, um, King John, you know, the Plagetent uh, dynasties, all those were swarthy people of color, you know, um, and that's not talked about here in the Americas because they want you to believe this narrative. They want you to hate, you know, and then once you come to the realization of real history, then it starts to make sense, you know, why would um, your oppressor or your enemy teach you the truth? I mean, they did have the literacy laws where slaves couldn't read and write. 
if we could read and write and comprehend, then we could figure out a lot of this BS that happened, you know, our ancestors. But unfortunately, they weren't um, fortunate enough to have the type of education or they're not privy to the the, um, the stuff that we have now. You know, the technology in our hands, the computer, which is like a modern day Alexandra library and the research. But um, and it's going to be kind of hard. Let's say that I have children. I'm going to have to sift through all the lies and the BS. They're like, hey, you know what? The TV it shows us always in a negative light. But this is our ancestry, which is a hybrid, I would say. Maybe that's the wrong word, but it's a mixture of all three of us Negroes, the natives, the black Europeans and the West African. OK, the same similar phenotype. So we're like one people. We're connected. Even though we fight about doctrines or we fight about different ideologies, we're one people in a sense. This is my opinion, you know. But we all got to test the spirit, right? Because everyone that look like me is not, you know, my peoples. But um, that's going to be the hard part. And anyway, you should be teaching your children um, real history anyway. Not on, Don't depend on these schools. These schools are not... You know, they just want to, I don't want to say white supremacy. I'll just say white rulership. They, you know, they've had their time. And now we see this kingdom, you know, crumbling and falling. You know, but buy books while you can. Use the Internet for good. Use it for research. Use it as a tool to enlighten or get some wisdom. Because with much wisdom, there's much sorrow as well. But uh, peace and shalom.